welcome back everyone to Classic Games Done Quick. We are going to keep with the theme and go right to Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. And we have Enchantress of Numbers here ready to speedrun that for you. Say hello. Hello. I also have Meg Makatek here helping me out on commentary because there are definitely some times I need to focus during this run. So, um, hello. I think, <laughs> I think my, we might as well just go ahead and get started. Sure, whenever you want to do the countdown, I'm ready. Sure. So the time starts about three seconds after I press start on this screen. So I'll press start and kind of count it down there. So, okay. Uh, all right. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. All right. So the first thing we are doing in this category is going to go for a double frame perfect trick called the healer glitch. And I'll let Meg kind of explain that while I focus. Yeah. So, yeah, this category definitely requires a lot of focus because there are a lot of frame perfect tricks in it, um, particularly this one, the uh, healer glitch, where uh, Ian is going to talk to the healer at two very specific pixel moments. Um, one while the healer is facing away, and then one while the healer is facing towards Link. Um, and they have to be done at a particular frame. And Eon guts it in the second try, which is really awesome. Um, this, we're about to see some really interesting stuff. This is going to be a wrong warp over to the King's Tomb, um, which is going to allow Eon to go into Death Mountain early, backwards, and get the hammer really easily. Uh, but first she's going to do some uh, some grinding for some XP here to, to make this a little more marathon safe than the, the typical world record run. Um, which has a, a chance for a bag drop that, uh, that you want to get, but you, you might not. Um, telling that uh, Dara give, gives a much better chance of... Um... Yeah, basically um, I do that so that I can be guaranteed attack three at the hammer um, without relying on a 200 point experience drop, so. Yeah, and that um, that Dara fight there, uh, the, the enemy that Eon was just fighting was called a Dara, and it's the one that throws the axes. Um, doing that fight at uh, attack one, um, life one is, is quite challenging. Um, and, uh, it's, it's the first thing you have to do in this, uh, this or any glitched run, basically. Um, and it's quite difficult. Um, so this, this, um, this category, this, this, uh, was not played this way back in the original CGDQ because most of the glitches that we're using were not known, um, at all, uh, or, some extent they were a little bit known but um they the extent of their their ability to break the game was not really known yet so um this in particular this wrong warp and um and the ability to do the visual glitches that we're going to see later uh is were completely unknown at the time uh so while they were ostensibly doing a 100 percent run at cgdq um it was basically glitchless on by requirement so yeah they at the time they knew how to get to glitch town through um what we call a hud fairy which we'll see later in the run in uh did not get the bag so now we have to go back and get this daira um but you could hud fairy off of a roof in a town called darunia which we'll see later, um, and that could get you to uh, Glitch Town, but no one really explored it to figure out its true potential at the time of the CGDQ run. So, yeah, in fact, um, the the ability to get into Glitch Town from Darunia was was in Nintendo Power uh, way way back in the day. It was in um, in classified information, in I believe, in in a Nintendo Power issue. Um, and yes, this is a hundred percent with glitches. Um, and so we're fighting a lot of enemies in the dark here because we don't have the candle yet. Uh, it's kind of called Dark Death Mountain to do this, um, although we're doing it a bit differently. And you can actually see the enemies, most of the enemies, by their feet on the ground, although you may not be able to see it very well on the stream, depending on the quality level that you're watching at. 
Um, but the, as a player, you can actually see where the enemies are if they're touching the ground. But otherwise, mostly we're just relying on them doing the same thing because they're, most of them do not do RNG movement very much, except for the bats. And the megmats have a little bit of RNG in their movement, which are the cat things that you barely saw and we will probably never see again in this run. No, I don't think we encounter them again, unless I take a, a an overworld encounter somewhere. Yeah. So now we're on a little collection quest. We got to um get some spells and some items before we can start diving into palaces. Yeah, this run is is kind of punctuated with um with uh moments of of like extreme precision balanced out by long period long stretches of like collecting things, doing things that are pretty much scripted and rote. Um there's not really uh a lot happening right now uh, because we just need to pick up a bunch of stuff. What's interesting is with the when you do an up A while paused on the second controller, it does kind of a save and quit, and that actually causes the RNG seed to reset to a base state. So that allows us to do scripted walks like this one um, coming up, or that I'm doing right now to. Um, basically maneuver throughout the overworld without taking encounters. Yeah. Um, and that is a big difference between this and the the kind of more dominant category of this game uh, these days, which is 100% all keys, in which you get all of the keys and all of the items. Um, in that category, you're not allowed to up A, and so there are far fewer opportunities for, for scripted walks um, that avoid encounters, and you actually have to put a lot of work into learning how to avoid encounters on the fly. Um, though, the, though a lot of the walks are still fairly scripted. It's just more complicated. And then coming up here on the second boulder break on this walk, there's actually uh, Fiesel found an audio cue um, where if you break the boulder at the right time, you guarantee a backspawn with the enemies. So it saves about three and a half seconds if you get it. Got it. And that's also because uh, we can do that because the RNG resets on an up A, so. Yeah. So now we're so, going to get everyone's favorite sword technique. Yeah, downstab really changes this game, and a lot of um, a lot of the reason we're doing all of this first instead of going into a palace right off the bat is because uh, we can use um, downstab and fairy to make uh, the palaces happen a lot faster um, now that we have them, and so palace one and palace two can can be done. Palace 1 in particular can be done considerably faster as long as you don't actually need to get all of the keys, which again is the other category that is quite popular for this game. Yeah, Palace 1, you blink and you miss it in this run. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to do Palace 1 glitched in this category like we do most of the palaces. I believe we do all the palaces except for 1 and 2 glitched still. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it used to be you did considerably less of the game glitched in this category, uh, but there was some rerouting done um, just kind of between um, Squibbins and me and Eon over uh, about a year. We we all like figured out some, some ways to reroute some stuff to make more and more of the game glitched. At one point we had all the palaces but Palace 1 glitched, um, but it turned out to be slightly faster to still do Palace 2 unglitched, I believe. Yeah, because you have to loop it twice because which we'll see that later with Palace Five. Yeah, there's um, some there's some quirks to the glitches in this game when we get to them that we'll we'll definitely talk about. Okay. Alright, and now we're headed over to Palace One. Um and yeah, before uh really Meg and Squibbins did the bulk of the rerouting. Uh, before they did that, it was um, uh, the route required three healer glitches, and now we'll only need to do two healer glitches. So 
Anytime you can cut out a double frame perfect trick, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely that third healer glitch made the run considerably more difficult uh, to like get a run finished with. Because you just get to that third healer glitch, and if you if you struggled with it at all, it would just ruin everything. Um, so only having to do two is pretty great. Um, that brings it down to the number that you do in the any percent run, um, which is considerably shorter than this. Yeah, the any percent world record is like 18 minutes and two seconds or something. So yeah, about that. So um, Eon is going to use Fairy considerably in this and also do several death abuses, which is another thing that um, that uh, is quite different from from uh, all keys. Um, uh, because because of the fact that we can up A, uh, it's possible to to do a lot more death abuses. Um, Neon is basically going to finish this with no lives uh, because of all the death abuses. Um, and that was intentional there to uh, refill my magic so I can cast fairy again. Yeah, uh, that's that's why that's why the death abuses so that you can cast fairy and basically you don't you don't even pick up a single key in this palace in this category. They're all very far out of the way. <laughs> Neon is taking damage deliberately there, um, specifically to make it easier to death abuse after picking up the candle, which yes, we are picking up because this is 100%, so we will no longer see any dark caves. Um, this is a good category to kind of introduce you to, to glitch runs because for one thing, it looks really cool with all of the glitches. Um, and for another, you actually get everything, so there isn't quite as much really challenging combat as, or really challenging avoiding combat as there is in any percent. When I learned this game, I learned any percent first, um, and it was definitely a very challenging way to learn Zelda 2. Yeah, I tried to warn you. <laughs> I, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> But when 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 I was working on rerouting this category, um, I, I actually never um, finished a run with with the reroutes that I that I figured out for this uh, because it made it considerably more challenging, and I haven't gone back to it since then. I'm a lot better at the game now. I could probably finish it now, but um, I was really happy when Eon wanted to come to this category because it got the chance for those those changes in routing to kind of come into into the category again. Right, now we've got our first boss fight of the game. Yep, horse head. Um, you have to hit him in his ears for some reason. That's his vulnerable spot. The hitbox skews high and left. You So you don't actually want to fight him from the right side because it's quite a bit harder. Yeah. It's also quite difficult to get him, get over him. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> All right, coming up on another glitch. Ah, uh, yeah, fairy feet. We're gonna we're gonna do a glitch called fairy feet here, um, which is where you uh, literally go off, just barely off the edge of the screen with one frame taps and trick the game into thinking by pressing the right button that you are leaving on the right side of the screen, um, making it so you don't have to do any um, any of the encounter. You just skip the entire thing. It's really awesome and something that is only possible in somewhat glitched categories or fully glitched categories like this one. I hope I didn't delay too much at that boulder. And this is um this is a scripted walk that Eon figured out. Um, really awesome, really neat thing. Uh, this is one of the rougher um, versions of it, but you, I think it is one of yours, right? Yes. Yeah. So Eon will get there with only one encounter. Yeah, one encounter. Just that half um, encounter. So. Eon makes that look so easy, but that is actually one of the most frustrating things in a speedrun of this game is walking through that swamp and getting like encounters, so many encounters. If you met, if you get one, you'll get several uh, without the scripting. And that is also only possible because of Up A. Um, yeah, I actually that. tasked out the walk based on different delays at the boulder. Oh, that bot jumped and got me, so. 
Yeah, and um, and I I was really happy about that. I learned those from you for my GDQX run that was yeah <laughs> a while ago, uh, which was a different category. That was for 100% no major glitches, which does allow fairy feet and up bang. Um, so is is a slightly different experience from this one, slightly. Although palaces one and two kinda end up looking pretty similar. Yeah, up to this up to this point, it's not really that different, except that you go through Death Mountain the right way uh, in 100% no major glitches, which is harder um, in a I lot of like ways. I feel like this is the right way to go through Death Mountain. This category, <laughs> I, I tend, yeah, yeah, I agree, actually. That's how I first learned. That's the first time I ever beat the game. It was it was going through the wrong way. So yeah, you're right. Okay, and we're going to take another death abuse on these iron knuckles here. Got to refill uh, yeah. for another fairy cast. To answer something in chat, yeah, every every was was written in assembly language. Um, that's there was not really a choice in the matter. You could not write something with a C compiler at the time that would that would remotely fit <laughs> in the available RAM. Um, but also, uh, the um, I think people are talking about the fact that the Zelda in this game is a different Zelda from Zelda 1 Zelda, which is true. like to try to skip that enemy, but it didn't quite work out that time. And here we learn that Iron Knuckles are afraid of fairies. <laughs> yes, Iron Knuckles are afraid of fairies. As long as they cast, as long as the um, fairy was cast uh, in the air, the Iron Knuckles will back away from you like that basically follow you either way um it's very very interesting uh, there's a few bugs like that i think we'll be seeing another one at some point where state is kept in a weird way that makes the game makes things act a little weird because you cast fairy with a certain button press um i don't actually do fairy claws in this one if that's what you're referring to oh right yeah no i could but i usually don't yeah you come you come the wrong way or the right way. Yeah. And now, uh, coming up on the second healer glitch of the run, and hopefully final healer glitch. <laughs> yeah, if Eon game's over, game over is anywhere before Grand Palace, uh, which is really unlikely, I think. Um, this will... Uh, there will need to be another healer glitch, but as long as everything goes right, this should be fine. Um, and this will be the last one. And there we go. First try with some bounces. Um, basically, if you get the first uh, pixel uh, properly and then miss the second one by a certain amount, uh, it'll the healer will walk away from their own house. Uh, and we'll keep walking, actually, if you don't talk to her again. Um, and, and you can bounce her back and forth until she comes back and you can get her to do it properly. And now we are getting the game really glitched. Uh, this is the best part. As you can see, the town is completely messed up. Um, and now everything is strange. And uh, it is great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, so these, I think the game looks the better. Light. I agree, and the visual artifacting will be there for the rest of the run, so... Yep. Um, and, yeah, it's not like an 
uh, artifact of the capture, uh, my TV looks exactly the same, so... Yeah. Suddenly all there, there's, like, windows in all of these houses, and there's, like, slants of light coming in the windows, and it, it looks great. And it's going to look even better in some spots. Um, this So this, uh, this uh, glitch basically makes it so that the game is confused about how... Uh, how large encounters are, how large screens are, and um, the visual artifacting is because it's got a different opinion um, about where on the screen, where in the screen you are versus how big it thinks it is. So it's spawning you on the left edge, but it's rendering you as if you're in the middle, basically, is what it comes down to, or on the right. And then all the glitches just kind of derive from that. Um, and it, it just messes things up so much, and it lets you basically skip most encounters. They become only one screen long, um, as long as you're leaving to the left. Uh, and it lets you do a bunch of wrong warps in... Um, we're about to see a bunch in Death Mountain. Um, as we go back to Death Mountain, this time the vanilla way, or the the wrong yeah. way. Um, You'll s we'll see Death Mountain just like everyone remembers playing it as a kid. Yeah. Where we will we will basically walk in to every screen, walk a little bit in, and then walk out to the left, and it will skip the entire thing. And that's because the game actually believes uh, when you do that that you are uh, leaving the screen to um, through the top or the bottom, um, because that's what that's what the game thinks it means if you if you leave the screen and it scroll to the left or the right. Um, it thinks you you are leaving up or down, uh, depending on some variables. Um, and those those exits are not not defined in the uh, in the data for the the screens, and so it basically wrong warps you to another another screen another exit that is not the one that it's supposed to. So and we actually can take advantage of that to bypass the river man, so we don't have to talk to Bagu. Yeah, we never talk to Bagu in this, so we we never get to to know Bagu. Um, we never talk to Bagu. We never talk to Error. Which, by the way, Error is not. Um, some people seem to think that Error is like a, a bug, like they, they accidentally left the word Error in. But actually, um, the names Bagu and Error are both jokes, uh, programmer jokes. Uh, they were named Bug and Error in Japanese, and the translation changed one of them to Bagu, and the other one did properly to error um, and kind of ruined the joke. Uh, <laughs> Got the, second there. The, the game is just being very confidently wrong. Actually a really good way of putting it. Um, so now that we've wrong warped over to uh, the maze, you may notice that if you're familiar with the game, you may notice, first of all, these enemies are not supposed to be here. Um, these are enemies from uh, Death Mountain. And also that the tiles are wrong. Uh, the, one of the one of the lines of uh, boulders has been skewed over, and that actually blocks our access to Palace Four. Um, and part of the rerouting that we did to make it so there's only one healer glitch was just to realize that once you leave and come back in, the boulders return to their normal positions, and you can actually um, do this part of the route as normal get the that's supposed to be a kid but actually it came out as because of the glitching it came out as the water of life because um, in, with the west continent tile set the water yeah. of life is in the same location as the kid is in the east continent tile set yeah exactly um now that now that we've left it it's loaded proper memory so we're not going to see that same kind of glitch again for for the rest of the run but and when we come back the tiles will all be normal and we'll be able to palace for just like we normally would have however palace four is going to be very very different <laughs> uh if you're used to normal speed runs of this game and we get to jump at the cloud Yes, the, the helpfully placed clouds uh, that tell you where to jump in uh, in this um, category uh, and most glitch categories, there's there's clouds placed exactly where you need to jump, which we believe is evidence that uh, Shigeru Miyamoto uh, intended all of this and was leaving little hints for how to play the game glitched. <laughs> yeah, and coming up after I get this spell, 
uh, we're going to exit the screen to the right and or the screen of the town to the right and I'll point out the house that you could f jump off of and um, cast fairy in the HUD to get to Glitch Town. Uh, oh, yeah. In... The original way from like 1989 or so. Yeah. When I first started running this game um, and I found out about the fairy town, the Glitch Town and like... Um, is this one right here, this house, you could do it from. Yeah, yeah if you ferry in the HUD where Eon is jumping, then I, I remembered that that was in Nintendo Power. I, I remember reading that kid about, about Glitch Town, and I was like, oh, wow, they found much better ways of getting in there. Yeah. So it's easier to get to Glitch Town with... Um... Uh, through Darunia, but it's faster through uh, where we started, so. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you may also have noticed that we didn't do Palace 3, which uh, normally you would have had to have used. Uh, you've gone to Palace 3 to get the raft. And Eon is uh, wrong warping all over the map, and that's going to happen a lot from here on out. Um, Fairy spawns. That is because we are actually going to find Palace 3 in Palace 4. Uh, we are going to go into Palace 4, and we are going to get both items from Palace 4 and Palace 3 in it, and fight both bosses from Palace 4 and Palace 3 in it, and that was also part of the big rerouting um, that made this category what it is now. Um, Previously, they, they were done separately, um, and that made things a lot more complicated and took quite a bit longer. Yes, yeah, this is, uh, it's kind of a confusing part of the run, but it's probably my favorite part of the run. Yeah, it's it's really great. Um, basically, what, what it is is that uh, when you... When you wrong warp, uh, as I described before, um, how the... Uh, the rooms have um, no defined exit on the, on the top or the bottom. So when the game thinks that you're leaving through the top or the bottom, uh, it, it does a thing in palaces where it warps you back to the entrance. It's basically room zero on the bank of memory that it's in is the palace entrance. But because palace three and palace four share a bank, uh, palace three is at the beginning of it and it is the actual room zero. Uh, so it actually warps you back to Palace 3, and you don't actually have to use the, this particular glitch to do that. You can actually ferry in the HUD in a couple palaces to get a very similar wrong warp to the sort of wrong warp to the entrance of the, one of the other palaces, depending There's, on which palace you're in. Um, palace 5 to Palace 1 is one that people accidentally do sometimes Yeah. Um, in all keys. Um, but yeah, you can also warp from Palace 6 to Palace 3 as well. Yeah. So here we're going to get the um, the item from Palace 4, which is the boots. And Eon is going to basically wrong warp out of here immediately by walking left. Um, and that's going to take her directly to the entrance of Palace 3. Um, yeah, it'll still look like Palace 4, but there won't be the flying enemy at the entrance. Yeah. Because we yeah, the... still have Palace 4's tile set loaded. Yeah, exactly. So this is actually Palace 3, you may notice the rooms are different. Um, we haven't actually warped to that place on the map if Eon leaves. Uh, she will still be at the exit entrance of Palace 4. But we are going to go and get the item, and then Eon is going to leave and then come back into Palace 4 and do uh, the boss for Palace 4 and then the boss for Palace 3. Or is it in the other order now? No, it's Palace 4 first. Yeah, okay. I know that there was some, like, some routing around that back when I was last last looking at it, but I don't remember how it ended up. Don't get the key this time. 
Yeah, um, this is this is also part of it. Um, part of doing all of this in one one big loop, Palace Four and Palace Three was was um, figuring out what keys you need to get when, and you actually skip the keys the first time through. You skip a couple of keys the first time through so that you can get them on the second time through. These rooms are uh, scary without the glitches, and they become even scarier without with them because you can't necessarily see where the platforms are. The faster you go through them, the, the easier it is to see the platforms correctly. If you go slowly, you have to pause to make the platforms appear if you want to see where they are, uh, which can be kind of difficult. back in and that means that we're in Palace 4 again. But <laughs> you may have you may have missed what happened there, which uh, which was a lot of room transitions basically, um, which were basically moving us down into the left in the palace, which is very quick with this um, with this particular glitch. Um, it, it, we're, we're able to move left very very fast and down very very fast because of the particular way the glitch the uh, scroll lock glitch works and that was a death abuse on purpose yeah you need almost full magic to be able to cast the reflect spell on this boss so which i do have queued up so and now we have the most exciting boss in the game uh, you just sit in this corner and let him kill himself, basically. Not a terrible fight, but not great. <laughs> no, that was all right. Okay, and now we have to exit to the left. If we exit to the right, the palace will be a boulder and we won't actually be able to go fight the Palace 3 boss until we get to Palace 6. Yes. Um, and that was that was a really challenging thing, because now that we've picked up an item in this palace and beaten the boss, in, beaten the boss, it means that the game will, when we leave, turn the palace into a boulder, which is the normal thing that it does. Um, but we don't want that. We need, we need to do this palace still. Um, fortunately, I mean... Theoretically, if you really, really wanted to finish up the run that up and the boulder palace was bouldered over, you would get another chance uh, because you could do it from Palace 6 as well. So, But it does kind of mess with the leveling. Yes, it would It would be a, a challenge to do that on the fly, for sure. And we're going to get the key this time. Um, Correct. That we skipped last time. And the pee bag that I skipped last time. I, don't the, think I knew that you got that pee bag. Yeah, because my drop is on the red iron knuckle right before the boss, and so getting the pee bag makes sure that I um, have enough XP. Makes sense. So yeah, the drops are on a six count, and I basically know where they are through this entire run. <laughs> so anytime you see Eon uh, curl left and exit. Scroll right and exit left. Um, what's happening there is that that's basically saying, now I'm going to exit on the, whatever the elevator exit is for this room, um, which basically means go down a screen. And that's that's what's happening there. Um, once you understand the mechanics of it, it's a lot less daunting than it seems. Um, and you can actually like reason about what, what's happening in these palaces, even though it looks completely nonsensical if you don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's what's happening there. Everyone um, get your Rebo Shark emotes in chat. This is the official mascot of this category. Yes, Rebo Shark. So this is uh, this is Rebonac, who usually rides a horse, but in this category rides a um, basically a shark or a whale. Um, Eon has affectionately named it the Rebo Shark. Um, and it's it's pretty great. 
Yeah, and that's because it's pulling those tiles from um, the Kerox robes, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, it's basically Kerox robes from like tilted sideways and looking strange. So now headed to Palace Five. I'm gonna go for a damage boost called the Eco Key. Um, hopefully, I get it. It's not the end of the world if I don't. For people unfamiliar with this game, the walking on water is not a glitch. Uh, that is actually what the boots allow us to do, the item we got from Palace 4, the first item we got from Palace 4. Um, this is this is actually normal. But now we're we're back to not normal, and we're going to be in a lot of not normal for a while. Okay. Preemptive asking you to remind me when I place the gem in this palace, remind me not to take attack 8, instead take magic. All right. I also have to set up a drop here, so... That's why I only killed the first two uh, of those ropes. And we got the nice. um, damage boost. So that what that actually allows me to do is I don't really um, need that drop uh, that I set up. And I can now cast a uh, shield against the boss of this because otherwise I would have to fight him without any spells at all. So, Because <laughs> magic is, is very tight at this point. Which is difficult at life three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this boss hits very hard. Yeah. So yeah, every time Eon comes into a room on, in a palace from the, the right and goes out the left, it, it's basically the room has been massively shortened. Anytime Eon comes into a room from the left, scrolls right a little bit and then exits to the left, uh, that's going down um, to the screen below the current one. Uh, if there if there is one set, if not, it will take you back to the beginning of the palace or soft lock you. Um, there's a few places you can get soft locked. Uh, from doing the wrong thing, so it's you have to be you have to concentrate a fair bit to make sure that you don't do the wrong thing. Um, and this this boss hits really hard, very often. I think this is a big stumbling block boss for people getting into this game um, and doing it low. Don't forget to not take attack. That's after the next loop, because remember we have to loop twice. <laughs> oh right, because... yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm right. not sure why that is, but for some reason, the trigger for placing the gem when you uh, have the scroll lock glitch like this on, um, that trigger does not actually spawn your first time through. You have to defeat the boss and then come through a second time to be able to um, do it. So uh, place but, the gem. But only in palaces... Uh... Two, five. One, two, and five. One, two, and five. Yes, for some reason, for some... only in one, two, and five, the, the trigger isn't there. In three, three, four, and six, it is it is there, and you can do it on the first loop through. So that was one, that was a big reason why Palace 2 didn't work out to be glitched in this category, was because you had to loop the entire palace again after getting... And that's a very right-leaning palace, and this, this glitch doesn't really help you very much if you're going to the right. Um... Yeah. So it wasn't sped up as much um, as some of these other palaces by by doing the glitch and and having to do the loop again. I forgot I needed to break those blocks. <laughs> oh. oh shoot! Where's the? There we go. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little difficult to find something there with this uh, this like thing. Yeah, the and scroll lock glitch. I kind of got out of my groove, and so I forgot my visual cue there. Okay. But everything is exactly where you remember it. So if you if you've done this, if you've done like non glitch categories, you you actually will have a pretty good idea of like where things are. Don't forget to not take attack. Thank you. We gotta take magic. Magic. Do a fairy again, because now we have to loop one more time to get the flute. I almost took attack. <laughs> <laughs> I reminded you. I know, I still almost did it. <laughs> if 
Fun fact, in my PB in this, I accidentally took attack 8 anyway and just decided to try to finish it. That must have been fun. It worked out, I got lucky. <laughs> Fairy again. So it's real nice now. After um, Magic 5, basically, is when you can start casting the Fairy spell more than once. Um, that was why I set up the um, drop that I did before, because I... Um... Oh, shoot! Okay, well... Uh, I... <laughs> oh, that's bad. Uh, kind of talking and going on autopilot, and I made the wrong play. Oh, no. There's, there should be another one that spawns. Do I have to go further to the left? You can just... Oh, no, you can't leave to the right. <laughs> no, you weren't to drop either, and I don't have an... I'll try... I guess we'll try this again. <laughs> oh my god, that is so lucky. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have to grab another jar somewhere else in the palace. Um, but luckily I didn't do it on a screen that would have caused me to soft lock because there are some screens where if you do navigate them incorrectly, you will soft lock into the ceiling. Yes, we were very, we were very lucky that wasn't. Basically. I'm gonna get the um, jar from this room. I'm glad you know where that is, because I, <laughs> I would have actually struggled yeah. to find that. Oh wait, uh, there. I almost cast the wrong thing. Uh, and then queue up jump for later. Double eco key in this run. I'm I'm impressed. Everybody <laughs> should be very impressed. This is one of yeah. the uh, ever marathon runs with a double eco key in it. I think. <laughs> uh, I'm fairly certain this is the first time that we've seen it twice in one marathon run. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, and getting it both times too, not just. So that, that's the first, I think. Oh, right, I gotta... Okay, there's the flute. Sitting, sitting in the middle of the air, there is a plunger, or a flute. Yes. Okay. And now we are done with Palace 5. And now we come up on some of my favorite wrong warps in the run. Yeah, we're about to warp all over the place. It's it's going to get real confusing. If you're if you're familiar with the overworld in this game, you're about to get really confused about where Eon is going. Um, it's probably not even worth seeing like that. What what was that? <laughs> we were in the middle of the ocean. Now we're now we're in a cave, uh, and now we're in a town. And oh, also this house has two doors. <laughs> yeah, one of them. One of them only appears when someone goes. To... And the most underrated spell in the game, right here. This is not um, reprogramming the game. Uh, this is not an arbitrary code execution. Uh, it is still just confusing the game about its data basically, which is not generally code execution. So we haven't rewritten the game, but we have we have confused it about its own data. Yeah, we we can't control. We did write some stuff to memory that we weren't supposed to, but we don't really have any control over that. Yeah, the gist of it is that um, there's a there's a stack uh, for when you go into doors in a town. Um, uh, for people who know programming terminology, a stack, who don't know programming terminology, a stack is just um, values 
stored in memory adjacent to each other up to a certain point. Um, and the stack is only four entries long. So when we went into Glitchtown and started going indoors over and over again, which just led back to Glitchtown over and over again, we overflowed that stack and um, and rewrote a bunch of other memory. And it just does some, some very interesting stuff to the game. Um, and yeah, right now we are also finding another town inside of the town. Um, that is what Eon just did. Uh, the hidden town of Kasudo uh, in glitched form contains the uh, the, uh, the old Kasudo town that was abandoned and visible on the overworld. Um, and that's how so, you have to get the spell spell, which yeah, you, you normally actually... get from new Kasudo. Yeah. Uh, and that that's some interesting stuff. We're in Glitch Town again. This is not Kasudo. Um, basically, anytime you wrong warp within a town, you end up in, in Glitch Town again, and you have to kind of leave and come back in, or you'll mess everything up. If uh, Eon had actually walked to the right of the town there, I believe it would have put you in the ocean, or if on you mountains. exit to the left without scrolling it, it does oh, that. Yeah, right, yes. So um, either exiting to the right, or scrolling to the right and exiting left, you're fine. Yeah. Um, so... That that's how a lot of my runs ended a category. I just like didn't scroll right on these screens, and I wound up in with Link embedded in some mountains some off the map. All right, and we're about to get the magic key that because there are no keys outside of boss keys in Palace Six, so it'd be nice if we got it earlier in the run. This building popping up from the ground is not a glitch, by the way. That's that's what happens in, in the vanilla game when you cast spell there, so. Yes. It warping across the screen, that's that's a glitch, but. And now we're back in Glitch Town and we're about to leave it again. Paused one tile too late. Okay. Art skip. And now we're going to the Hidden Palace. Or Three Eye Rock Palace. Yeah, and this is our last normal palace of the game, uh, which will, again, look anything but normal. Okay, no jars. That means no fire strats. Well, that's disappointing. But also a lot safer, so... Yes, I usually can't make it past that one when it spawns there, I don't think. Uh, no... No ceiling walk. Easy on. <laughs> I guess the, this max glitches category has failed now, so. So fun fact, um, this this screen even in uh, even in non glitched categories is uh, is quite difficult um, because of the flying heads and. Something that a lot of people, when I watch people play this game blind, um, they they think they need to like run through that room as quick. But actually, you just want to stop those enemies, and even top speed runners will do that um, a lot of the time. There is there is a faster strat through there that has been figured out recently, but it requires the fire spell, and it's it's fun and it's swaggy, but it's also risky. It's very risky. Um, so. It's if you're if you're inspired by this to play this this game now, which um, it might be a little daunting because of how glitchy it is right now. But uh, definitely, when you get to that room, just stop and kill the the flying heads. You'll you'll have a better time. And we get we don't get a rebo shark this time, unfortunately. 
This is what this is what Rebonac is supposed to look like. The enemy that Eon referred to as Rebo Rebo Shark earlier. That's the horse. Uh, unfortunately, because we did not come in here through glitch, means uh, the the sprites are correct. So. Yeah, and you can only get the Rebo Shark if you wrong warp from uh, Palace Four. Yeah. And unfortunately, you can't wrong warp to Palace Six from anywhere that we know of. Right. Okay, there's in non glitched, there's a manipulation here, but it doesn't work when you have the scroll lock glitch, so. Yeah, unfortunately, you just get random. Uh, yeah, without scroll lock, if you come in here, although you did get it. <laughs> yes, but you can't. Uh, yeah, you can't bank on that. Um, if you come in here and don't don't stop at all, even to cast spells, uh, uh, then um, this seconds. boss will spawn on the, the right pit every single time. Okay. Uh, the item in six is a cross, which lets you see, uh, which is kind of like the lens of truth in, in later. So um, it lets you see... Um, certain ghost enemies, basically. Uh, Moas, which are the flying eyeball enemies in the Eastern Continent. Um, you can't see them without the cross. Yeah, uh, which you is sort of go back in and get now. Yes, we saw some Moa. I actually killed a Moa when I had wrong warped into Old Kasudo, um, and you could only see it when it was in its damage flash animation. Yeah. Always forget which sp if I actually queued up the spell I want. Nice jar. That 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 is a chance for a jar. It's not a guaranteed jar. It can. <laughs> I love that walking right over that gap there. Um, Let's see if I can get the rail grind with the skull bubble on the next screen. So, like I was saying, uh, everything in the game. Right is exactly where it is non glitch. Nothing is actually moved. Um, so when you're familiar with the game, you're just you just go through the rooms on autopilot and you going. Got the rail grind. Coming up on the next, uh, this is the third and final time we'll fight Rebenak. Sadly, once again, not a Rebo Shark. Oof. Oh, and getting. Okay. Did the downstab um, for the final hit? Yeah. The, there's a scary thing with um, Rebenak. I don't know. I don't know if the glitch state uh, changes that actually, but um, if you kill Rebenak. Uh, on the left edge of the screen, just off of the edge of the screen, uh, you can actually soft lock yourself in the room because uh, because the key will drop on the wrong screen and the scroll will still be locked on the boss fight. And there's one of those clouds that tells you where to jump again. Miyamoto's yeah. little hints. I've never gotten that soft lock in the glitch state, but I believe it still can happen. Um, the glitch I usually see on Rebenak is, for whatever reason, with scroll lock, his hitbox likes to do real funky things. And yeah. some, like with a hitbox uh, detection tool, um, I've actually seen his hitbox go under the ground. So M MDI Eon definitely would reroute this to have all Rebo Shark if it was possible, but sadly it is not possible. So. Uh, unless you want to find the glitches that let it happen, which would be very impressive. And we're doing a fairy feat again, um, which, if you remember, is the thing where you uh, go off the edge of the screen to the left and then with one frame taps and um, wrong warp basically to the other side of the screen. Well, it's not really a wrong warp, but that's a matter of debate. Um, and we are about to do more wrong warps, and we just jumped all the way from that cave to Grand Palace, which 
was a, was a big big lead. The Valley of Death. <laughs> yeah, we we just skipped the entire thing. No Valley of Death. If you if you played this game and you beat it, you uh <laughs> you may be wondering how you can skip all of Valley of Death because it is it is a brutal part of this game. Um and yeah. Uh and once once we're in Grand Palace, we can up A and it actually presents state which no up Aing anywhere else in the game does not do. Um, yeah. The up Aing at Great Palace doesn't clear a lot of things from state, which is interesting. Like your drop counters, if you up A somewhere else, those reset to zero. They don't up A if you, uh, or they don't, yeah, they don't reset if you up A in Great Palace. Um, I, uh, your next counter on the experience in the top right, um, that if you skip a level, that next counter goes to a higher number. Um, that will not reset if you up A right. in Great Palace. It will anywhere else. Um, I've never investigated the RNG, but I believe that... I, I would be very surprised if that also reset, or if that does reset instead of not resetting. So... Good spicy chicken skip. Coming up on everyone's favorite enemy, Scott Bikula. Oh, I jumped just slightly too far for making that jump. Yeah, this, this, um, when I was learning any percent game, uh, this was, this was seriously the biggest blocker that I experienced in trying to beat this game. And it looks so easy when he undoes it and when, when I do it now, but when I was learning it, that room was just brutal. So the big the big thing here is that um, we are going to skip the penultimate boss of the game. Um, we are going to skip uh, Thunderbird by doing a HUD fairy, uh, which, about, um, which is another way to um, basically confuse the game about where you're going on a screen that you're not supposed to be able to and. Um, in this case, it doesn't really... It does send you where you're supposed to go, which is down a screen, uh, but it sends you to the right of where you're supposed to be when you get there. Um, and that, that end, ends up with you uh, sitting on top of the uh, entryway to T-Bird's room. Um, All right, which, good Thunderbird fight. We then wrong warp again in the HUD, and that basically takes you to the far side of the room, and then you just walk straight into Dark Link's room. And we are going to finish this real soon here. Um, Dark Link is a very hard fight if you don't know what to do, but it is um, has a well-known fight strategy at this point. Um, and time. Nice. That's a that's a pretty good time. Yeah, especially considering I lost over a minute because of making mistakes in Palace Five. Yeah, that would have been a fifty-six minute marathon run, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, because your your record in this uh, fifty-six eleven. Um, so yeah, yeah, that was that was really good. Thank you so much, Enchantress, for the run. We are all going to get uh, set up for another uh, Legend of Zelda run, and we will return in a moment.